Hi everyone, this is Hope Yoder with Embellish Maker Fundamental Video 7. In this video we're going to talk about applying a stamp to a fill design and we'll also be talking about the tools inside of Create. Let's go ahead and get started. This function will collapse all of the tools on the left or expand them all. We're going to collapse them all and simply open File and a new page. Next, we're going to go under Create and we'll talk about design. I'm going to draw a simple rectangle using the rectangle or square artwork tool here. I'm also going to go in and fill it with color. I'll close this design window and we'll come under the convert window. Convert, in the last video we talked about a lot of the icons, but one thing I forgot to show was this icon showing a stamp pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is fill this with a standard fill of stitches. Doing that, let's zoom in so you can see what that looks like. And let me click off so you can see it's just a mass of stitches and when I select over here we have a standard fill and you can change that to different patterns right now we're gonna leave it at the standard fill the next thing that we're gonna do is we want to use the stamp fill pattern notice that went away when I selected the stamp fill the correct way to use this would be to get a shape first so we'll go back into the design tab and select a custom shape. There are some shapes built in and that's what I'm showing you and I'm going to select this little jack shape. It reminds me of playing with jacks when I was a child and I'm going to just duplicate this and put a couple jacks here. We'll just do three and when we zoom in it's a little hard to see this. Whoops. Let's zoom in little bit you can kind of see the jacks color on color I'm gonna hold down my control key while I select all three now I'll close the design tab and come back under convert excuse me I will stay in convert and select the stamp pattern what I'd like you to look at is notice how the fill stitches look when I apply the stamp pattern stamp watch what happens it actually stamps stitches over the fill so that it looks like an embossed design and if we zoom in a little higher you can see what that looks like it's really a, a kind of a neat effect so that is the stamp feature let me zoom out and we will delete this and we'll delete the next icon. I'm going to close convert so we can talk about the create screen. Create is where you have some automated an artwork wizard, a digitizing program. This is your buttonhole vector and emboss designer, my favorite. Now we're not going to talk about wordplay. Notice this has excuse me here. Notice this has the letter W um, for wordplay and the letter N that is orange. What that means is I have craft and cut software loaded on this computer and it's fully functioning inside of Embellish Maker. If you do not see this icon with the orange N, that simply means you don't have craft and cut installed. Let's go to the auto artwork wizard. This is where I'm going to select an image that I have saved off of um, the internet and we'll take let's see here this image and it isn't a vector art it's just a JPEG image I'm gonna select next and notice how fuzzy and pixelated it looks and watch the screen you can see that it's not a real crisp line this auto artwork wizard is going to change it into vector art which would be like an SVG file or right I'm going to select finish and now look how nice and crisp those lines are so I have just turned an image off the internet into artwork 
And why you might want that, let's get rid of this little happy guy here and concentrate on the Canadian leaf. In previous videos, we showed you convert and back into the fill. There's fancy fill. There's motif fill. There's gradient fill. There's stipple. We could just do a satin stitch around that. So that's why um, if you wanted to create a design that you don't own from a screen capture or JPEG, you're going to use the auto artwork wizard. Now let's use the auto digitizing wizard and I'll show you what happens with the same image. We're going to select an image. Let me find the same one. And here we have the same image. Now we're going to open it and I'm just going to click next and not really change any properties. Select next, next and you've got some different functions here. Uh, I do want to trim and that just means that um, your automatic trimmer on your embroidery machine or your, your bobbin cutter will trim. And I'm going to select finish and I have actually turned that artwork into stitches all at the same time. So here I have um, automatically digitized the artwork. We'll close that. Next we have buttonhole. So if you wanted to do in the hoop buttonhole, you simply select it, hold down the left part of your mouse and drag with the left part held. When you let go, then you've got a buttonhole. And let's kind of zoom in so you can see that buttonhole. Whoops, I accidentally clicked. So I will undo that. I'm still in the buttonhole mode, which means until I click off of that, I can create unlimited buttonholes. Now let me zoom out and let me unselect that by clicking on the select tool. A little alignment tool will just give you a sneak peek under a line. I can take these and move them so they're all to the left or all to the right. Let me undo this get them back where they were. If I wanted them all sitting on the bottom line angle, I could use that top line angle. These are pretty self-explanatory, so just play with them. If I wanted them to horizontally align in the center, I can do that. If I wanted them to vertically center align, there you go. We have center to the rulers, and let me zoom out so you can see what has happened. The rulers would be the grid marks. If I want to center them all on top of each other, that's the icon that I'm going to use. Now here's something that a lot of people don't realize they have at their fingertips. Notice how this space is wider than this space. I want equal spacing between the buttonholes and that is how you would do that. If they were stacked on top of each other, I would use this icon. Now under a line, here I have several functions that have the letter N. Again, that means I own Craft & Cut software and when I installed Embellish Maker, Craft & Cut becomes fully active, 100% functional. Every single feature in Craft & Cut is now a powerhouse inside of Embellish Maker. So I have the ultimate crafting and the ultimate embroidery digitizing program all in one. So that's the Align tool. Let's come back to modify. Now on this button, you can distort the buttonholes. So I could change them into a wave and that's not gonna really show very much. So let's close this out and let me select, make a, uh, we'll make a square. Actually, let's use the, um, this function. We'll make this and I'll fill it in with a fancy fill. Doesn't look very good and the reason why is my design is pretty small. Let's make it a little bit bigger and we'll do a fancy fill. Let me zoom out. Now let's go back to my modify tab, distort. If I wanted to change that I can just kind of play with my different options. Here's a wave. 
and twirl and pinch and sphere. And you've got a whole different look. Let's undo that. And now we have fit to the hoop. So if I had a hoop of the last hoop I used was four by four, so that's gonna automatically enlarge my design to fill the hoop. Let's undo that. And you can see there it is before I select fit to the hoop and now it's generated more stitches. To turn the hoop off, I'm gonna come under view and we'll just turn this off. Now the next feature that I have to show you that's active is color sort and I'm going to need a couple more of these so let's make this one purple and we'll make this one let's see purple and we'll make this one yellow and I'll do another yellow And we'll do a different color here. So we have several colors, but notice we have two blues that don't overlap. And right up here, it's showing me that we have four different colors used. So when I select all of these in the sequence view, you can see I have one, two, three, four, five. When I select the color sort, it's going to not reduce it. Well, that wasn't a very good example. We'll go back to that in a future video. So modify, we have an automatic basting feature. And under the tools section in preference, I can select how far away I want my stitches and whether I would like crosshairs. So you can see that now when I baste, it's going to go a little further apart and I have those crosshairs. And then we've got um, some more features. You can group all of these objects together. If I were to move that, only one object moves. If I select them all, then I have group here and I have ungroup and all of the other functions are craft and cut exclusives. So that is the modify. We'll come back to importing vector art. And this is if you have vector art, which would be an SVG, an FCM, or an AI file, you can import it into the program. Now let's go to my favorite. We're going to go to the emboss designer. And I'm going to pause for a moment here and show you a beautiful picture of what emboss looks like. All right, what did you think of that? That's pretty cool. You can use minky fabric or terry toweling. Emboss simply means that we're going to mat down the nap using stitches. So you have right now, the time of making this video, I have 23 shapes at my disposal. Border type means right around the edge of the shape and the letters do I want it to be no stitching, a run, or a satin? My preference is a satin. If I want this to be 3.5 inches, I'm simply going to change that and I have maintain aspect ratio. You can see it in 3D. You can view it in inches or in metric. On this side, we have text and we'll just say um, X. Well, let's just do We'll say honey. And we can select all different types of fonts. So just as a, as a um, tip for you, try to get a font that's big and chunky so that you can have more of the tallying showing through. And then you can make this larger. You wanna make sure it doesn't touch the edge. So I think I got a little greedy. 
We also have the pattern, and that means this nap stitching. So I can go on the straight or on a diagonal. I have options for line, curve, or wave. And then I can add an outline to this. Then I'm going to select Apply and OK. And when this comes in, let me show you how it stitches. It's going to stitch down the towel. So I would hoop the towel with Embellish rent Sticky Rinse Away Stabilizer. And then I would use a clear, uh, the Rinse Embellish Rinse Away Topper. This is going to just do a straight stitch on the outer edge. So what I'm going to do, let me get out of the slow redraw. I'm going to right click and left click for ungroup or I could come back down in modify and ungroup. Now I can take this and use what I've learned in the videos and change it into a satin stitch. If I want it to be a wider satin stitch, then I can come into my properties and the width is 2.5 which you may not see that on a towel so I'm going to change it to 4. And if you look at that, you're ready to go. All I would need to do now would be to save it as a WAF file first. After I've done that, I would then go back and save this in the embroidery format that I need for my machine. What do you think of that? That embossed feature is pretty darn cool. Now let me do this one more time and let's get a new page for you. Another thing that I didn't show you, we'll just take the circle and I'm going to go back to satin and we'll use this applique font now. Instead of text in here, notice text is selected. I can choose to put a shape inside of the circle. It, I can only choose a shape or text. Unfortunately, not both. But this would be great. I can still add that outline if I want to in here. And when I select apply, now I have a big area of toweling that will poke through. So you could add a monogram in that center if you wanted to by selecting your font or just text or welcome and then you could add that inside. Now on the monogram font in the center, I would use embellish iron away topper. Perfect. That is embossing. Stay tuned for fundamental video eight where we'll go over the rest of the icons.